Let me paint you all a little word picture. It's a crisp fall morning in 2007, and you woke up early before school so you could play your favorite video game, RuneScape. You went to finish that hard clue scroll before school so you can brag to your friends about that third age armor you're definitely gonna get. But then you open up that next clue step and you see this nightmare. Psst, I secretly actually kinda like these puzzles. But yeah, that was most of our introduction into these type of puzzles. And since our stupid childhood brains couldn't figure them out back then without looking up a guide, <laughs> I thought today I'd code an AI to demolish any size version of this puzzle. But in order to do that, we actually need to be able to play the puzzle, so we're gonna yoink some code for a sliding puzzle game from the internet. And I think this simple source code from Geeks for Geeks, great website by the way, will be just the starting point we need. And perfect. Let's just test this bad boy out now and see what it looks like. Okay, well, I mean, it's fully functional, doesn't look great, and I hate how you have to like click and drag the pieces to the empty space. That's awful. That's gonna be fixed right away. So yeah, let, let's make some changes here and maybe make this a more improved version. All right, we're back and I've made a bunch of quality of life improvements to the game. So as you can see, now you just have to click on a tile to slide it from place to place. I changed the color to be a little more appealing to the eyes. And I also actually made a change so that way you can scale the board to any size rather than just three by three, because we're gonna need that later when we try to tackle a massive board. But before we get there, we need to talk about the actual algorithm I'm gonna use for the AI to solve these puzzles. And at first I wanted to do something similar to the Block Blast video, where I just look forward X amount of moves and then pick the board with the highest score, however I assign that, and then just keep doing those moves until the board is solved. And I did try that with the scores being assigned based on 2D matrix distance calculations, but we ran into some problems. So if we open this up here, the first problem you'll notice is that it actually takes a while for a move to be made. That is because we're looking nine moves into the future currently, which is tens of thousands of possibilities that all have to be calculated. So it takes a while. And while I could do some multi-processing to cut down this time and shrink it massively, I'm feeling kind of lazy and there's other problems anyway. And if we jump forward a little bit here, you'll actually see the real main issue. It just doesn't solve it. We're on move 300 plus, and it's still not solved. And in my personal testing, it only takes about 20 to 50 moves to solve the three x three. So something is just not right here. It seems to get stuck in some cyclical patterns and just doesn't move forward anymore. So I think we're gonna have to rethink the algorithm and just choose a different strategy than looking forward X moves. And luckily enough, there is actually one logically perfect way to solve any number sliding puzzle, no matter what orientation it's currently in. The algorithm is pretty simple. All you gotta do is solve the topmost row and the leftmost column, and then you can ignore those tiles and you've basically shrunk the whole board by one dimension each direction. And if you keep repeating that process over and over again, you'll eventually shrink the unsolved part of the puzzle down to just a two by two square. And then you just gotta reorient those three blocks and you solve the puzzle. That's kind of the easy part though. The hard part is navigating that empty tile around the board to properly move the pieces to where you want them to be. My strategy there is to take the desired location of the current tile, which for the one piece is the top left, then figure out which places you can move that one piece in order to get it closer to the desired location. It'll always be a maximum of two places and a minimum of one, unless it's already in that desired location. From there, we can mark a tile that is the intersection of those movements and then continuously try to move the empty space to that spot, while also avoiding ever touching your actual current tile. Eventually, the empty space will be on one of those yellow tiles, and in that case, just move the one piece now. Then just keep repeating that process until the tile's in the desired spot. There are, however, a few edge cases we have to consider as well. Like, let's look at that last set of moves to get the one in the correct spot. You'll notice that the desired location, the possible moves, and the intersection tile are all actually in the same spot. And it's impossible to move the empty space directly to that location without moving the one tile, which would break everything. So instead we just code an edge case to move around the current tile. There are a few other instances of edge cases like this, but I'm not going to show you all of them, just know that I accounted for them in the code. Finding them was not easy though, and I ran into a lot of bugginess when testing the code. But hey, it did all eventually work out, and now we get to test the final product. And to start things out, I'm going to start with a simple 5x5 board, and I'll slow things down a little bit so you can actually see what's going on. Okay, I was able to handle that pretty easily, but how about we give it a real challenge? The RuneScape Castle Slide Puzzle, and for this one I'll let it have full speed. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Way easier than actually like putting in work and thought, those other things. But with that out of the way, I think it's time to do a little bit more limit testing and try to expand this board as much as we can, while still being able to read the tiles. So let's make this puppy bigger. No, even bigger than that. EVEN BIGGER! Uh, okay, that'll work. I mean, any bigger than that, and we're not gonna be able to read the numbers. So let's get it started, then.
Oh, uh, yeah, this is way too slow. I'm pretty sure this would literally take days if I let it keep going like this. Okay, so I went through and removed a lot of O of N squared complexity issues, where basically you were having loops that were going through the 1500 tiles, and then within those loops, it was going through the 1500 tiles again, so you were actually looping through millions of items each time it was trying to figure out where to move the empty space. So yeah, I removed all that. I mean, it was just some unnecessary slowdowns from the original Geeks for Geeks source code anyway. And now it should be much faster, hopefully. So fingers crossed. And oh, sheesh, that's way faster. Okay, th this we can work with. Oh yeah, that thing's chugging along now. But I'm still probably gonna have to speed this up because even though it's much faster now, it still looks like it's gonna take a hot minute. And I'm sure you guys don't wanna sit here and watch this for 45 minutes. So like, sit back and relax and enjoy the show. All right, it looks like we're about halfway done. And the great thing about this algorithm is that because you're shrinking the effective board, the closer you get to the end, the faster it actually goes. So we're gonna really start zooming here. See what I mean? It's already done now, and it looks like everything's in the proper order. I'm not going to go through all 1,521 tiles, but you can if you want to. I'm going to use my quick scan I just did as proof enough for me. It is interesting, though, that when you speed it up as much as I had to, it kind of looks like waves are washing over the board and just solving it along the way. But yeah, pretty quick and simple video here for you guys. If I think of a way to make the board even bigger and still have it be readable, I might post a short with that. And the next video that I'll be working on will be going back to a reinforcement learning algorithm AI. So hopefully you're excited for that one. And hopefully I won't take so long to get that one out. Life kind of got in the way with this video and it took a little longer than I wanted it to. So sorry about that, but if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.